Welcome back to Arthritis Now. This week, we're going to be finishing up talking to Dr. Craig Walsh from the University of California, Irvine, and his work in autoimmune research. If you missed part one, be sure to check it out right here. If not, sit back and relax, and let's jump right in. You have attended um, some of the, our Meet the Scientists events um, for the Arthritis National Research Foundation. Um, why do you feel like events like that are important to have for both scientists and, and kind of patients to know about and, and meet some of the people that are, you know, working in the labs to find cures? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of times um, as scientists we tend to really kind of focus, which we should, we should be focusing on the science and trying to understand how things work and sometimes you sort of forget about the you know that this is really affecting lives and it's, sometimes it's just uh, sort of grounds us and kind of reinvigorates our, our um, excitement for what we're doing and why we're doing this. Yeah and, and speaking of patients like how do you hope that your research will kind of um, affect patients in the long run? How, how do you see it translating to the patient population? So we uh, obviously you know we, we'd love to be able to cure some of these autoimmune diseases. I think that um, you know the, the the uh, the short term is to try to be able to to treat them so that we're trying to do the, the least amount of damage, right? So you know one of the things that we're excited with with DRAC2 is that by blocking its activity, we can basically induce the shut down these kind of autoimmune responses without making these people more susceptible to, let's say, a viral infection or something like that. And that's kind of a an important issue in the area of immune tolerance and, and autoimmunity because, the drugs that are out there now, um, one of the one of the side effects is that, you know, while you may be able to shut down the the underlying autoimmune disease, you tend to make those folks more susceptible to infection that that a healthy individual would be resistant to. So that's that's obviously one of the sort of the, the short term goal. And then the longer term, we really want to explore more about this interplay between these these immune cells and the cells that are involved in repair, so that we can understand more about the crosstalk between them, how we can um, not simply block the underlying autoimmunity, but also uh, promote repair. And so we, we've been doing a lot of work lately looking at stem cells, certain types of stem cell populations in the context of multiple sclerosis, and have found out that there's, there is actually some interesting you know, two-way communication taking place between the immune cells and these, these repair cells, these stem cell um, derivatives in uh, the context of MS. And we think that this is probably going to be the case uh, as well in other autoimmune diseases where, you know, if you can not only overcome the, the autoinflammation that's taking place, but also try to, to help this communication take place such that these repair cells can now come in and start to clean up the damage and, and start the process of basically fixing whatever the, um, the inflammation, those problems that have been caused. And so would like in like flash forward like five years from now, where do you kind of want to see your research? Like what area or at what level do you hope it could be? Well, we we're really excited about taking some of these ideas into some patients. Um, we're we're now starting to look at in the in the context of MS patients, trying to use um, inhibitors of DRAC2, so so basically drugs to try to block the the underlying autoimmunity, and then as well we've defined these um, stem cell populations that we can put into. Uh, into MS patients. So over the next five years, one of the things that we're working on is trying to refine, you know, how we generate these these stem cells, and then how we where we need to transplant those into into MS patients. And I'm also very hopeful that, you know, because because we're also interested in other autoimmune diseases, including R R A, that this is probably going to be a general feature. And then, um, could you just tell me like how like some when you were funded by ANRF for that first time, just how it made you feel, what, were you, what, what it meant to you? Absolutely, yeah. So that was the, the very first grant that I had funded. It gave me the confidence to, to go on and, and apply for um, additional funding. And, but it was really kind of it was the, first, uh, the first piece of funding that we had that I could say, hey, we got that. And so it certainly gave us a lot of confidence. Not only that, but it also, you know, it paid for experiments that, you know, we're still, we're still working on some of those, those questions and, you know, still trying to understand, for example, how DRAC2 works. And that was one of the, the first uh, grants that we had that funded that work. Yeah, that's cool how, how it's, how 
the grant kind of has such longevity. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a it's a wonderful uh, grant mechanism, and it really you know it really helped us out a lot. We're all excited about moving in the right direction and 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 trying to cure this disease. And I think with you know continued um, funding, all the the strong efforts that your folks put put forward on this, I think we'll get there. Great. Yeah, we we hope so. We hope so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Um, we appreciate it, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching part two of our interview with Dr. Craig Walsh and his work in autoimmune research. Don't forget to share this video on Facebook and Twitter to help raise arthritis awareness. Check us out at curearthritis.org for all the latest information on the foundation, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest Arthritis Now episodes.